Howdy, and welcome to the Feed Bandit Podcast, where we talk all things hunting and introduce you to innovative hunting products and services. If you want to level up your hunting game and gear, be sure to join the hunt. To join the hunt, text the word BANDIT to 345-345, and when you do, you'll join our email list, where we'll send killer deals on innovative hunting products and services, along with entertaining tips and tricks straight to your inbox. Again, text the word BANDIT to 345-345, And we look forward to seeing you on the hunt. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Jimmy here. And as always, I'm joined by uh, my esteemed colleague, uh, Richard. How are you doing tonight, sir? Doing fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we are uh, are in dove season. I I mean, we just started. (laughs) Thank (laughs) God. Yeah, thank God. Uh, Hope everyone out there is, you know, uh, getting their limits and whatnot. Uh, Please uh, let us know how you're doing. If you get a chance, uh, you can email us at howdy at feedbandit.com. Uh, we'd love to hear. If you got any good uh, dove hunting stories, that'd be that'd be awesome. We'd love to uh, we'd love to read them. From this end, we've uh, had kind of a slow start, but uh, hopefully it'll <laughs> hopefully it'll uh, it'll pick up. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we'll probably do a separate episode on right. it. But, uh, let's put it this way. When you're a migratory bird and there's a big cold front, it really screws things up. So uh, now we won't we won't dive too deep into it. But we, we, we did have a great time. Again, it, it's it's kind of I, all, all week on social media last week, I, I really kind of hammered out that, you know, the, the hunting, of course, is, is not all about the – not all about the the bag. I mean, that had that certainly helps. Okay, but uh, you know, it's more about friends and family. So we we got a good dose of that. Texas Tech won. I mean, that's overall it's pretty good weekend. I got five. So we'll 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 leave it to that. You know. Well, so, you say Tech won, but remember, yeah. there, when people hear this, this will be after game two. Oh, that's so technically true. we're recording this after game one. That's true. That's so, true. All right, hopefully well, that will uh, yeah. hopefully that will stay the same. Well, yeah, let's that, put it this way. Let's put it this way. If they don't win the following game, there won't be any more of these because <laughs> losing to UTEP is unacceptable. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if you're prescient or not on this uh, podcast. There you go. Here. There you go. All yeah. right. Well, that's uh, that's Dove. In this one, uh, we're excited to be talking about quail. You know, it's something uh, uh, that we both enjoy, especially oh. eating. Oh. And I- <laughs> Uh, but it's also one that uh, you know I, I think a bird that you know you have to really think about and think about habitat and all this type of stuff right. you know to help them out and uh, so on this podcast uh, we are honored to be, to be talking with uh, Ron Kendall Jr. He's the president and founder of QuailSafe. Hey, welcome to the Feed Bandit podcast, Ron. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thank you for having me on tonight. It's uh, it's always great to get to chat about quail. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to uh, to learn some new things tonight. And uh, d- before we really get into you know the the nitty gritty of things, how about uh, just give us a couple of seconds on you know who you are, uh, how you got started uh, with Quail Safe, and uh, what you're all about. All right. Well, my name is Ron Kendall. Uh, I'm I live in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, right outside the Rolling Plains, which is um, some of some of the great quail habitat um, of the state and the country. So I I grew up out here in the Rolling Plains. I I was born in South Carolina and moved to Lubbock. Um, my father is a professor at Texas Tech University at the Wildlife Toxicology Lab, and he he brought our family out here uh, when I was. A few years old, so I, I would say I'm a I'm a native Texan at this point. Heck yeah. um, I, uh, I I grew up uh, doing a lot of quail hunting with my father. Even before I could walk and keep up with him, I had a little battery powered jeep that I would just you know <laughs> chase him as best as I could. Uh, we oh, that's had awesome. We've always had English setters, and you know they they put up with me, and we we would drive around. Uh, throughout the rolling plains chasing oh. quail and and eventually I was able to start hunting them. Um I'm a I'm a Texas Tech grad just like you guys. Yeah. yeah and, but... <laughs> and uh while I was at Tech I, I I started really getting into um I always had a passion for for conservation and wildlife management and 
I, uh, I started working on, on this project that we now call Quail Safe. And, and I started working on developing some management products that were specifically focused for quail because I feel like uh, quail, you know, quail need all the help they can get. And that was something I was really passionate about. And so it fell into place um, right out here in Lubbock, Texas. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah Ron. I, I I knew that when we when we first met you that that you, know, you you were solid gold. You know, once you said that you know you went to Texas Tech and all that. I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's that's just a trust thing right there, man. So that's <laughs> awesome. That's no, awesome. it was great. Yeah, we uh, ran across you and your at your booth at uh, the Fort Worth uh, Texas Trophy Hunter Show, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, this, uh, we love what we saw. So. Uh, Let's uh, dive in. It's uh, what what do y'all do at uh, Quail Safe? So Quail Safe, we um, we've got a, a good team. We've been working on our quail feeder for probably around seven years now. Um, at at the conception of Quail Safe, we you know initially wanted to create a pig proof, predator proof, bullet proof way to feed quail uh, efficiently. And uh, that, that's that's what we started doing uh, out at our family ranch in Kent County, Texas. I basically worked with my father to put together a, a different methodology of, of feeding quail through feeders. And our first quail safe was actually a um, old dog kennel that we put up panels and put netting and wire over and had a hay bale ring on the inside of it with a tarp over it and then a little wow. feeder i welded we put inside uh, we wanted to keep the rain off the feed keep it dry keep 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 predators out um so that was that was where this started about seven years ago um quail safe was developed to meet a need um in the market that i saw which was a feeder and an array of products that catered just to quail and Alongside that need in the market, my father is a toxicologist and parasitologist at Texas Tech University. And around the time we started working on this, he was um, tapped by some foundations in the state to start researching um, a hypothesis that parasites impact wild quail populations. And that's a a whole nother uh, long story as well. But Fast forward to now, um, he's developed a medicated feed for wild quail, and we are able to utilize, through a pilot program with the FDA, uh, we're able to utilize quail safes to deliver that feed at a large scale. And the FDA requires that that we select for quail and not just throw feed, especially medicated feed, out on the ground. So quail safe's been developed to select for quail we've got a quail feeder we've got an electronic quail collar that mounts on top of the quail safe it's battery powered Um, we developed all the electronics in-house it plays a quail covey call four times a day so ideally we can increase the range of every feeder you don't have to buy so many feeders and we've also got a, a fortified feed it's a basil crumble feed that's uh, packed with amino acids, vitamins, minerals, everything a quail needs for it's a complete diet for quail that that really helps boost the immune system and reproductive function. So it's not just giving protein like uh, Milo will give quail uh, protein, but you know if you just fatten something up, you know it's it, it it helps. But if you can give them necessary nutrients as well you're able to to really improve the overall health of the bird so that's that's uh, another product that we that we've released and then we've got a little quail uh cube it's a feed cube that we put inside of the quail safes as well so that's a a quick overview of kind of how we got started and and what what we're doing now okay why do you uh why do you reckon quail uh require you know I don't know if you want to call it special care, but, you know, it's, it seems like they're a little more kind of finicky maybe than other birds. Like, wh- why do you think that is? Well, uh, I I think they, they're probably just, they're so delicious. You know, everything <laughs> yeah, everything wants to eat them. 
Well, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. No, um, <laughs> they're a, they're just a, a, a very sensitive species. Um, I I have spent a lot of time with with Dr. Dale Rollins, who is a uh, a great teacher and a great friend of mine, and and I've taken his quail master's class and spent some time at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, and and Dr. Rollins uh, discusses the quail and 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 says they're the canary of the prairie, and they're they're a, <laughs> a species that you know if we can if we can manage and maintain wild quail populations, they're they're a very sensitive species, and if we can do a good job managing for them, we're doing a great job managing the entire ecosystem. So they are just a, a, a sensitive, a sensitive uh, animal and they, they do require certain, certain things as far as habitat and nutrition. And they also have a lot of predators. And I think, um, more and more so lately there's there's even there's even more odds stacked against them yeah so um so ron talk to us about you know uh it, it, talk to us a, a little bit about you know the 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 feeder itself you know about the design you, know, you said you were you, you you said it was pig proof you know and which obviously is huge now what, what about cows okay no matter i know if a bull gets after it okay he can the bull can probably flip whatever they want to but but is it is it cow proof i know that's a that, that that's probably a big question on a lot of people's mind who who want to help quail right but you know they don't want to go out there and, and put a feeder and, and tend to it just to come back you know a month later and to find the thing flipped yeah yeah so the quail safe feeder uh it's it's a, a fully steel welded construction. Um, it, it's manufactured here in Lubbock, Texas, uh, and it's fully powder coated. So it, it's it's really built to last. We we didn't cut any corners developing or manufacturing this product. Um, so it's it's fully powder coated and and it looks great. It tucks into the environment really well. It doesn't stick out, but you know, one one thing that the quail safe does really well is um, it's we, we took some time working on the footprint of the feeder itself. So other quail feeders, um, they've got a smaller footprint and they basically allow for for other creatures, say hogs, other other animals to get get close enough where they want to dig. So that's a big issue with other feeders. The pigs will start rooting around them and create a moat and dig that feeder uh, lower into the ground and create a uh, basically a barren ground all the way around the feeder. Um, so that's that is not optimal for feeding quail out of a feeder, and that's a, a real important aspect of what we try to achieve at Quail Safe and and going into the field with with a lot of landowners we work with and making sure we place these properly and the quail safe has a, a 40 inch by 40 inch footprint that allows you to tuck it into great escape cover and right. not have pigs and and other animals wanting to to dig and root around it uh, when it comes to when it comes to cows we we, we manufacture this out of 14 gauge steel and it's got a real low center of gravity and 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 if you you check out the, the quail safe at quailsafe.com you know you can see pictures of this thing angles towards the top um it's almost a like a pyramid shape but um uh, real low center of gravity and you can stake it in if you desire we don't have any issues with it i have cows um on, on a lot of these ranches i've, I've run tens of thousands of trail camera photos. I've looked through so many photos. It's, uh, it's crazy, but Excellent. even with cows leaning up against them, which does happen occasionally, they'll, they'll come to scratch on them. Yeah. Um, we've got no issues with, with, with anything like that. And, right. and they're built, they're built really stout. So even if you had an all dad ramming up against one, I think you would probably be fine. Excellent. 
Yeah, the, re- the reason why I asked about it is when I actually looked at it, that was one of the first things that crossed my mind is is I looked at the, like like you said, the, the, the pyramid design to it, and it also looked like it didn't have any, really didn't have any scratchable corners, you know, where a cow could lay into there and really go to town, you know, so um, that's that's mm-hmm. awesome. What's the, you know, so in, in, in Texas, we've got, I think, three different species of quail, but the, the two predominant ones. Ones are going to be the the bob white and then the uh, the scaled quail or the blue quail. What what are are do, do the blues do the blue quail use it uh, as frequently as the bob white quail or not the case or what what are your thoughts about that? They are they are just as willing to utilize it and um, at our place in in Kent County, even right even. This weekend, uh, checking trail cameras, I've got I've got um, coveys of blues and bobs utilizing the same quail safe. So the the blues um, scaled quail readily accept the quail safe, um, and and even with multiple coveys, they seem to they they typically each covey you know has they they, they share pretty well. I guess right. is what I'm what I'm saying. They uh, they they'll, they'll trade off. Um, time in the feeder right right now as far as the the feeder is concerned what what what's the capacity of this thing and does it come in in multiple sizes or just just one size well right now it's 150 pound capacity um and and that'll last you uh, depending on on your quail numbers largely depending on your quail numbers it it should keep it in the field for for months. Um, we're looking towards um, making a, a a larger capacity model, right. but for right now, the feed hopper is removable, and it makes this particular unit very very effective for our pilot ranches where we are switching out to medicated feed, um, where we have to we have to follow strict protocol um, and, and it makes it, it makes it a very easy to use feeder when you got to, you got to switch out feed, uh, just pull the hopper out and then it's, it's a lot simpler instead of having a, a huge hopper that is, uh, you know, once it's filled, it's filled. Right. So. T- talk to us a little bit about the, you know, the the, the medicated feed. Um, now I, I know that the, um, you know, well, actually no. T- talk, well, talk to us a little bit about the medicated feed, and then the feed that that you were that, that you guys produce, and then also, you know, if you know, can, can you can you mix those? Can you mix either one of those with just Milo or Hen Scratch? Is it is it beneficial that way? What are your thoughts about that? Okay. Well, you know, as far as the feed, our, our quail safe fortified feed, um, I spoke about it a little bit earlier, but it's, um, it's a formula developed at the wildlife toxicology lab. They've spent over three years developing it at Texas Tech University. And it's a, it, it's a formula specifically for quail. Um, and, and it's, it's very very beneficial it's a wholesome diet so we we added amino acids and and all the vitamins and minerals it's high in protein basically it would be like you eating a incredibly well balanced meal for every meal every day and taking your vitamins and it's a, it's a great diet for quail so what we're trying to achieve there is not just give them protein, but give them everything they need because as, as we've learned, uh, quail, quail need all the help they can get. And so if we can charge these quail even more with, with added nutrients during stress times, whether it be reproduction time or throughout the winter, um, this, this makes sense. Uh, it's, we're feeding it through a feeder, delivering it directly to quail. The quail take very readily to it. It's got crushed corn. It's got whole milo in it. So the quail visually accept the feed. They and they and they and they they eat it. They they really enjoy it. 
and ate a lot of it. Um, so that's the fortified feed. And then the medicated feed, um, and I, and on the fortified feed, it, it would be, it would be very beneficial. I mean, even if you did a mixture, um, where you, you mixed it with Milo and fortified feed, I mean, that would be great as well. Or you could feed just the fortified feed. Um, but that would definitely be an option is, is mixing it. Um, and then the medicated feed has been, it's been in development for, I guess about four years at the wild, wildlife toxicology lab. And this feed, um, is essentially a, a dewormer for quail. Um, the wildlife toxicology lab has many publications on, on, on parasitic infection and in quail. Uh, obviously, Quail have been parasitized for a long time. The first report of parasitized quail was in the 60s in Texas, and no one ever followed up on that report. Um, we don't know what earlier quail populations could have been. We don't know where these parasites really came from. We don't know if we introduced these parasites or if changing climate, different changing patterns um, have increased uh, the impact of these parasites, but right. we have seen uh, amazing results on our pilot ranches uh, for, the, for the medicated feed. And so we've been able to utilize the quail safe to deliver medicated feed directly to quail. And um, the medicated feed is going to be, it's called Quail Guard. Uh, it's a partnership between the Wildlife Toxicology Lab, um, Park City's Quail Coalition, and the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation. They've been um, instrumental in funding, funding the, the Wildlife Toxicology Lab and my father, Dr. Ron Kendall, um, on their studies of the effectiveness of this feed and um, getting this through the approval process with the the FDA. So wow. the FDA is allowed for for piloting of this, um, and basically, what we're able to achieve with medicated feed is we insulate quail populations and quail numbers on a given property from heavy parasitic infection, which can be devastating uh, right. to quail numbers. So, yeah, you know, I could go, no, ahead. go ahead. Uh, now, I was, I was just going to make the comment that, you know, I, I've been following the, the plight of quail in, in Texas for, for many, many years. You know, it was a handful of years ago where, um, you know, we started hearing about these parasitic eye worms, you know, and God, I, I thought to myself, how, how in God's green earth are they going to, you know, how to, to, to attempt to wipe them out? And I know you can't because that's, that's playing God and that just doesn't happen. But, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's just fantastic that, that, that something has come along that's, you know, going to at least uh, help them fight. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, people, people question the, how much of a role we should play um, in this situation right. and whether we are playing God or not uh, right. By, right. Try, by trying to treat for parasitic infection. But, right. you know, I, I, I was, my father grew up in South Carolina and, uh, he grew up hunting wild birds and there's no wild birds anymore. And, yeah. and habitat, I would say is probably the biggest factor and it's a huge factor in sustainable quail populations, but it, things change and we have to evolve. And, and I truly believe that it's, it's our, our duties. It's our duty as, uh, as, as stewards of the land to to uh to to try to reduce the impact of these parasites because we truly do not know where these parasites came from and and what role we've played in right. in in the parasites that are impacting these quail and if we don't do anything i'm afraid that that uh that th this tradition might be uh, very short lived uh, right. in my lifetime well, again, my my hats off to 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 you and your father for for everything that you guys are doing and have done to preserve this, um, you know, quite frankly, the, this Texas treasure. Uh, I I could not agree more. You know, losing.
threaten the quail as a species in the state of Texas would be would be devastating from a wildlife perspective uh, because you know again every every critter plays a very important part in that food chain. Uh, but but the the financial impact that it would have on small town Texas on on everything the domino effect is in my opinion frightening. Um, I mean, there, there, as we all know, and of course, especially you know, Jimmy and I, and probably you yourself, Ron, small town Texas is uh, is very near and dear to our heart, and you know those little those little birds that <laughs> that crawl around on the ground are a huge part of of bringing in money to to these towns and and helping them out, and so um, you know, losing the quail would just be beyond devastating. So uh, again, Absolutely. my my hats off to y'all. As far as a, a impl- implement, implementation strategy for the the feeder, how, how many are we how many are we looking at here? And I, I know I guess it depends on your density and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know they say with white tails you're supposed to have a protein feeder every every 300 acres. Now I don't know if that's the biologist talking or the feed or the uh, feeder manufacturers, but <laughs> or they have the uh, feed seller. You know? Yeah, they're like we well, need one every 10 feet. You know, uh, but yeah, you know, what what what's your recommendation as for, for as far as quantity is concerned um, on on that particular place? Yeah, you know it's it's uh, that's a variable that that we're still learning day by day, and it definitely there's there's multiple factors that play into that decision where you know it would be habitat how how far do your birds actually have to travel to get everything that they need? How willing right. are they to travel? Um, the size of your property as a whole, uh, you know, when we look at someone who might have one section compared to someone who might have 10 sections. Um, now, hold, hold on. Last... Let me, let, let me, let me stop you there. Not, not to interrupt, but with the three of us know how much a section is, but I, I get, we've got some listeners okay. from May, from Maine and New Hampshire and, and really all mm-hmm. over the place. T- tell them. The how Rhode they, Island, which yeah, maybe, Ro- yeah, Rhode I Island, eat, which might not be a section. Right. <laughs> Tell them, how much is one section? You're right. One section is 640 acres. It's a square mile. So, you know, it's far ranging. Some of the landowners we deal with, it could be 400 acres, you know, when we uh, up to 20,000 or or much higher. So, you know, we, we... we are dealing with landowners at all levels and, and learning the best way to implement th- these technologies to, to cater to those needs. And, you know, the last, the last piece of the puzzle is budget as well. So we've right. got some landowners that, that have a, a enormous budget um, and, and they, they are willing to put a lot more of them out. So right. I would say a good rule of thumb is, three a section or, you know, you know, some somewhere around that right. um, would would be fair or one every 250 acres, so, right. something, something around those lines, depending on, depending on, um, on your budget, really. Right. Um, we just, we just set up uh, in Western Oklahoma, we did about 6,000 acres and, and we put out 24 Excellent. units, which which is, uh, I would say, a really good, really good coverage rate. Right. And I, I think you could honestly go a little bit lower than that. Um, and that's something we're we're working towards. We're really excited. We're our our next our next um, step forward into the research at Quail Safe. We're we're going to be installing RFID scanners um, and 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 banding birds with RFID chips, where we'll be able to to see which quail safes they're going to and how frequently right. uh, it's a, it's more cost efficient than putting these GPS trackers on them. Right. But uh, it's, it's something, it's a way we'll, we'll be able to collect more data and be able to speak more definitively towards that question of how many do I really need depending on, you know, my habitat and where I'm at. Right. And the other piece to this is, um, we just we just shipped some out to South Carolina where oh, a lot awesome. of these to a, a three thousand acre place where they're spending 
I mean, they're spending over six figures a year on on broadcasting Milo, and wow. we're kind of doing a, uh, you know, we're proving up the effectiveness in South Carolina right now, where basically this landowner, he, he told me if uh, it, it would be more more cost effective to him to invest in 300 quail safes for his 3,000 acres right now than to continue his current right. milo broadcasting program right. so right right but um, the the deer the turkey and the dove would hate him for for stopping that program <laughs> they would they would be upset absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but this guy only cares about quail and it's uh, i don't know it's huh. it's amazing how how focused a lot of these guys are on on quail they, they well, that's, take care of the quail well that that's <laughs> awesome man i mean people we we need more people you know, like that individual in South Carolina. And I mean, boy, that guy, especially in, like you were saying, the deep South used to be quail heaven. And now it's, you know, there aren't any wild birds left. So again, the hats off to this guy for, you know, for everything he's doing. I mean, that he's got a, he's got a big chore ahead of him. So, um, yeah. yeah. Can you, uh, can, can you take just a minute and describe for some people that may not know, like what would the ideal quail habitat look like? Well, it varies, and I would say my expertise is um, is uh, in the Rolling Plains, and I can't, uh, as far as the southeast, I'm not as well versed in that. But uh, really, really, what we're looking for is good nesting habitat, and that would be good bunch grass. You know, and there's a fine line on on how thick we want the bunch grass. We don't we don't want a property that's so overgrown where the quail, a quail is a ground bird, they want to stay on the ground and we don't want a property that's so overgrown that a quail can't um, evade predation and move around efficiently just to feed and, and access water on the ground. So uh, that's that's a reason that cattle and fire is, is used to manipulate properties to, to make sure it's flourishing and it's not overgrown too thick um, we want good, good spaced out escape cover, uh, and and you you would like to manage a property ideally where it's not so um, thick uh, as far as canopy or mesquite, where you can still hunt, but um, enough enough escape cover spread, whether that be mesquite or um, uh, you know other other bushes. Um, where a bird can efficiently, a quail can can quickly escape predation if they do flush. So um, I know Dr. Rollins, his his methodology for assessing uh, quail cover is a softball, and when he he has a softball when he when he tosses it, the ball needs to be able to roll a, a, a good ways, and that allows you know that, that means a bird can 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 run on the ground and then he needs to be able to stand in in one spot and if he if he turns and throws a softball he could hit um a a bush some sort of escape cover Hmm. um where it be a cat claw or something you know where a bird could dive into a quail doesn't want to fly more than about 70 yards so uh, for us in the rolling plains um shinnery oaks things like that good ground cover is important but you know it doesn't doesn't, not too thick so it's the balance of cover Uh, they can they can utilize prickly pear as nesting cover that's about it just just the good balance of cover Mm -hmm. okay you had mentioned that no clear no clear cutting no clear cutting there's it's really you know you can manage for cattle and out here uh, especially we're out, I'm out, I'm out in Kent County all the time and some of these big, big properties will just clear cut just, you know, just for their cows and you can manage for cows and, and quail uh, side by side and you don't need to clear cut your whole field. <laughs> mm-hmm. You, you uh, had mentioned that uh, you guys were doing some pilot programs with some ranches. Are you still looking for ranches to, to work with or are you kind of full up right now? Um, that's can be more so with the wildlife toxicology lab. They would have oh, okay. to speak to that more, but um, there's definitely, there's definitely 
I think some more room um, for some pilot ranches. Ideally, I think something in South Texas would be great. We'd love to do some work in South Texas. Mm -hmm. um, it's more, uh, we haven't even gotten into, there's eye worms and cecal worms. And ce the cecal worms are in the digestive tract, but there's a mm. there's heavy cecal worm infection um, in South Texas. So it would, it would be definitely very interesting to, um, to, to pilot the medicated feed in, in, in South Texas. So we're, we're mainly in the, in the rolling plains right now. Okay. So if someone were to contact us, would you be willing to forward them on to, uh, whomever they need to talk to, to maybe get that conversation started? Someone from South Texas? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We could, uh, right. we could definitely get that, get that conversation going. Okay. Well, if there's yeah. anyone out there down there that are, that's interested in the program, just email us at howdy at feedbandit.com and uh, we'll, we'll help you out. I'd like to personally volunteer to, uh, and this is, this is tough for me to do, but personally volunteer to come and help take harvested samples. Uh, and I just <laughs> want to do my part, you know, and, and after it's all said and done, I'd be happy to dispose of the bodies and, you know, I might bring right. some beer. We'll have a good time. But <laughs> okay. anyway, it's just to throwing that out there. Okay, Ron, if, if anybody needs some help. You know. All right. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make that happen. That's, that's what we need. We need more, we need more harvesters. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah, oh, I just right. shoot quail and eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually, it's actually good. I mean, you guys, we're, we're managing for quail. We're managing the demand. So we can oh it, it's perfect you can I'll, I'll be your guy you know you okay so we're 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 trying to do this so we make Richard happy you know and if I'm happy then <laughs> it's working go. oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm giving putting in my two weeks tomorrow this is going to be fun <laughs> <laughs> looks like we'll be having more more feedback at podcasts from the field up there yeah <laughs> yeah I wish, I wish. <laughs> so so Ron anything else you want to tell our, our listeners about quail or quail safe anything anything more. Well, I think we, we've, we've, we've covered a lot so far. Um, really, I would just ask people, people listening to, to be open to new ideas when it comes to wildlife management and habitat management and um, be willing to, to get outside the box a little bit. Uh, the, the world is an is a ever-changing place. And, and, and we need to, um, do our, do our best to stay up to speed. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do at, at Quail Safe. And that's what the Wildlife Toxicology Lab is doing. Um, I would welcome anyone if they have any, any questions, uh, to reach out to us, um, at quailsafe.com. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the medicated feed, research um, at the Wildlife Toxicology Lab. Their URL is just wildlifetoxicologylab.org. And, and our, you know, our, our biggest challenge is, is uh, just education and getting the word out about some of these projects and just, just hoping for, for a, a receptive and, and open discussion with, with everyone that we, we talk with. So, uh, that's that's really all I could say is just uh, I I just I hope to to speak with more people about quail and and quail management and and just just keep spreading the word. Well, well, Ron, I, I we, we will we will do our part to uh, uh, to help spread that good word. You know, again, kind of the, one of our main goals here is to attach or align ourselves with with uh, with efforts and you know whether it be companies and like yourself or organizations like your fathers that are out there trying trying to trying to make a difference for the betterment of wildlife especially in the state of texas so uh, we're a huge fan again we we thank you for all y'all are doing um and we'd love to have your father on one time that would be uh that that would be a real honor as well so yeah that'd uh, be we, great. We, we appreciate your time tonight awesome well Jimmy Richard, thank you so much. Um, it's it's uh, it's an honor to spend 45 minutes talking with some fellow tech grads about quail. So I really appreciate it, guys, and thank you for for all you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the Feed Bandit podcast tonight. All right. Y'all have a good one.
All right. Well, that was Ron Kendall Jr., president and founder of QuailSafe. You can find QuailSafe over at quailsafe.com. Over there, you can find uh, his feeders. You can get all the information about them. Uh, very informative website. Uh, you can, and you can also buy them via their store, which you can link, which you can get to through quailsafe.com. Oh, and uh, be sure to check out the uh, the Bob White movie, the Bob White film that you can see on there uh, yes. as well. Very uh, cool. When, yes, when you're over there. So uh, that was very interesting. Uh, yeah, quail have always been, uh, and of course, like I said at the beginning, I love eating them. Yeah. That's pro- they're definitely my favorite. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. But uh, no, I mean, it's it's amazing, you know, all the, what we need to do to really help them out. And interesting, maybe something to uh, consider for Rancho Bandito. No, I, I I totally agree. I got I got I got to talk to El Bandito Senior, senior but uh, right. no, I, I I completely agree. Um, I, I think that you know what he's doing with the feeder, and and, and I I think for the record, I can tell everybody. Uh, if if you are interested in feeding quail, and, and you know you're you're looking at some of the other options out there, you know, uh, really give give quail safe a a really good hard look. I can tell you. That I've gone with some of the other brands. I've done some homemade stuff, and it has ended up in, in, in pure disaster. I mean, the quail feeders are extremely susceptible to to hogs, cows, sasquatches, and everything, and and that's why they had to make this thing the way it is online. I mean, and, and I, it it struck me when we were walking down the Texas Trophy Hunter show, walking down the aisle, and I said, "Oh my God, look at that thing! Yeah. It's huge!" Uh, oh, I remember. I was like, you know, yeah. looked down, and you're like, "Whoa." That is yeah. a solid piece of machinery. It, it is, it is, but it's got. <laughs> but 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 he's right. He's right for that thing to be self-sustained out there in yeah, the middle yeah. of a pasture. Mm-hmm. It's got to be that way. The other ones that I have have n- never stood a chance. In fact, I don't even come out there anymore. Yeah, because yeah. because it was a waste of time. It was a waste of feed. Um. So so he's right that the quail safe is is definitely needed out there. Um. And and it's just really super exciting to see what they can do. Yep, yep. I mean, all you gotta do is take a look at it. You know, it's oh, yes. it's solid. So yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that that was fun. Um, oh, wow. you got anything else for the folks before we sign off tonight? Well, uh, you know, not a whole whole lot, but uh, I think um, it's going to be awesome for uh, you know to hear some dove stories. We want to hear about them. Uh, I think again, I think we're going to do an episode here, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about. It. But uh, the weather's been frustrating, but. Man, oh man, I can probably speak for you, Jimmy. It's just great to be out there in the field. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. it's still blazing hot, but those those sunsets are changing, and just man, it's I love it. It's very exciting. Yep, I agree. There's, you know, the the uh, getting your limit, as you said at the beginning, is the icing on the cake. Just to be oh, able to be out yeah. there, sit out there, away from the, the concrete jungle. Yep. You know, oh yeah. As you say, it's worth its weight in gold. So. Oh, it really is. It really is. <laughs> All really right. Is. Awesome. Well, great. Uh, thanks again, Ron, for coming on. I really appreciate it. And everyone, uh, be sure to go out and check out quailsafe.com. Check out what they have to offer. And with that, we will bid everyone uh, adios and see you on the next one. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Just a reminder to text the word BANDIT to 345345. And when you do, you'll join our email list where we'll send killer deals on innovative hunting products and services along with entertaining tips and tricks straight to your inbox. You don't want to miss out. So again, text the word BANDIT to 345345 and we look forward to seeing you on the hunt. Until next time, have a good one. And remember to support your local feed store.